How should you structure your days or time as an entrepreneur or a creator? Today, I'm gonna to talk a little bit about a few tips that I've picked up along the way. This is a common question that I get all of the time from different remote founders and creators that I work with. And so I wanna dig in a little bit to some tips that have helped me. Now, if you're somebody who's got a part of your schedule free or you work for yourself, you might think this is this amazing privilege and it is. However, you are still your own boss and you need to figure out some type of structure to put in place so that you can be as effective as possible because ultimately the market is your boss and is determining how productive you actually are. So it can't just be a free for all and this is something that many people struggle with. There are pitfalls all over the place, whether it is the fridge uh, that is calling your name or that bed that looks so comfy you can take a nap. It's difficult to often find the optimal way to schedule and think about your time. Now, the way that I like to think about scheduling my week as a creator is that I am somebody who is a sprinter. I'm not necessarily a marathon runner. I'm more of somebody who runs a marathon in a variety of small different sprints. The reason I'm a sprinter is because my attention span doesn't last that long. So I prefer to get work done in short little bursts of energy and time. By structuring my day in sprints, I'm able to focus on just one task at a time, one blog post, one video, and then I can look to what is the next. I'm also a little bit ADD, so I can sprint on one project, pick up a different one, sprint on that one, and I have fully embraced that I am someone who sprints. I'm better at working in 30 minute increments, 60 minute increments, in shorter deadlines than I am somebody who's very capable of being focused on long-term research projects where I'm spending you know, hours and hours on the end of day on just the same subject. That's just not for me. Now, maybe that is for you. Maybe you're a marathon runner and you're better at having long periods of time focus on just one task. You like to go into deep work. So the first thing is figure out, are you a sprinter or are you a marathon runner? For me, I like to sprint and that's why I focus on just short little bursts of energy on different projects throughout the day. But the second thing I wanna talk about when it comes to structuring your time as an entrepreneur is taking vacations. I have totally changed my mind on vacations and breaks and taking time away, even if that's just for a few days or the weekend or at the end of the day. What I've realized over time is that the more time away from work that I have, the more structured vacations that I have, the more breakthroughs I have in my business. And I wanna explain that a little bit further. So when your head's down, when you're sprinting or in, a, in your marathon of building your company, it might feel like you just can't take any time away. It might feel like I have so much to do, how could I possibly give myself a break? But every time I took a vacation, every time I took some time away, every time I put in my calendar in four weeks, I'm gonna take this long weekend, I'm gonna take three days off, I realized I was having all different types of breakthroughs in my business. And what that means is that when I came back from my vacation, when I took a break and got some space away from my business, for the first time I was able to see new ways of problem solving the things that I was doing day to day. So taking breaks, taking vacations, taking space is a way to rethink your company in a more effective way. And that time away can be spent very productively even if you're not thinking about the business because when you come back, suddenly you've got a new idea that saves you time, that saves you energy, or even puts your company in an entirely different trajectory. So vacations are a critical way to have breakthroughs in your business and a critical balance to your marathon or sprint that allow you to have new breakthroughs in your company that you wouldn't have if you were just heads down all of the time, actually making you more effective. Now tip number three is about seasons. So I like to work in short sprints, I like to take vacations when I can because it gives me new insight of my business to be more productive in a different way than I was before. Now, of course, if you live uh, in the Midwest, like where I'm from, you're accustomed to these four seasons, you know, spring, summer, fall, winter, but we also have seasons of our work. Now, I have a difficult time spending more than a month to three months focused on any particular area of my business. Some seasons I have a certain type of energy for work maybe that's more admin. Some seasons I have a better focus for something that's more extroverted like sales. I find that there's actually a rhythm to the work that I pursue and I like to think about it with this question, what season am I in for my business? Am I in a phase where I'm hiring a lot of people? Am I in a phase where I'm getting a lot of 
uh, internal work done that needs to help me grow in the future? Or am I, am I in a season where I actually need to be doing many different sprints and I really have to be heads down? So it helps a lot to understand what season you're in. And my fourth and final tip is energy and juice. So rather than thinking about time, I like to think about how much energy I have in a day. What am I excited to do? What do I have energy for? What projects or ideas can I work on that truly get me excited, that give me a lot of juice? So if you can ask yourself, what do I have juice for right now? Maybe you've got a to-do list and you're trying to figure out which one to get started on. Ask yourself, what do I have the most juice for? What am I excited to jump into today? Because what I find is that energy and juice, they actually build. It's not that you're depleting your energy over time throughout the day. Instead, sometimes it's really hard to get started with your to-do list. So instead, if you jump in and you figure out which project you've got the most juice for, I find that that starts to build and I can carry that on over to other projects, other to-do lists that I have that day. So always audit where are you at energy-wise and understand what do you have juice for, what gives you that pull, what would energize you in the moment, and then ride that momentum into the rest of your to-dos that day or even that week. So those are my four tips. The first one is understanding, are you a sprinter or are you someone who likes to be in a marathon personally? I'm a sprinter. The second thing is understanding that vacations in space away from work create breakthroughs that allow you to come back and be more effective with your time. So it's not time wasted, it's time that helps you re-clarify what matters in your business. The third tip is understanding what season you're in. Are you in an internal focus system season? Are you in a sales season? Understanding what the season is about can help you focus on what's most important as you structure your time. And the last tip is doing some type of energy audit to understand what do I have juice for today? What do I have juice for in this to-do list so that I can get started and allow that energy to build and grow into other tasks. Now, I wanna leave you with one more bonus idea. The key for understanding how to spend your time, how to spend your week, how to spend your year as someone who is a creator on projects or someone who's self-employed is developing your own set of preferences. Notice that many of the things that I talked about today were about developing my own preference for how I uniquely work. My preference is that I run in short sprints. My preference is that I focus on a season. My preference is that I work on this task which has the most juice for me in this moment. Having preferences allows you to shape a week that matters to you and matters for your business. Having priorities allows you to, to create a structure that works for you. And that is the thing that's so cool about working on your own projects, whether it's in your own time, just on the weekends or full time, is you really get to let those preferences show. So today, don't allow the nine to five, don't allow the shoulds and the ideas of how you are supposed to be working run your calendar. Instead, start to experiment, answer the questions like some of the tips uh, that, I, that I gave you just before this and ask yourself, what are my preferences? How do I best work during the week? Now, I hope this helps you think about how you structure your time. And as always, I'll be back again very soon with a new video. Later.